Hey, Charlie. How you doing, bud? How you doing? Looking good. Well, that was nice. Giving the camera sniffs and hello to everybody. How nice of you. I should do the same. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Look at that shadow. That's a nice, big, sexy shadow. Pardon the echo. Construction going on in this room. Haven't gotten any of the sound buffers up yet. Look at what I picked up today. Got it because of the pot. That's the only reason this thing's in here. And I've had people ask me about spathophyllums, which this video isn't really about spathophyllums, so it didn't matter what plant was in this pot, but more so my routine when I buy a new house plant. With this plant, seeing as how it's, well, it, you know, looks like this, this is more of a TLC fixer-upper situation, and that there's no, no lighting in here yet, because construction, so... Here we are. Work with what we can. It's raining outside and dark and 11 o'clock in the morning. And the grow space where I normally film the videos is just a disaster because of all the things that we talked about in last week's video. That's going to be fixed up soon, though. From a cinematic perspective, lovely. Beautiful. But as far as it being able to see the plant, uh, maybe not the best. I'm going to go find some other lights. First thing first here, got to... Inspect the plant, see how it looks. Ideally, something to do before you bring it home. I did do that to an extent, but it was on clearance. I just didn't really care that much what it looked like because I got this for the container. And really, for being 50% off, this plant is not in bad shape. It has some buds that are looking a little bit sad, but some fallen flowers and some buds opening. It has some brown stuff to prune out. But from looking at the undersides of the foliage, haven't noticed any pests, nothing like that. There are some water spots, no big deal, easy to fix. When I look at this plant, the main thing I think is, okay, this needs water. <laughs> needs a good drink. Spathophyllums, they like things to be nice and moist at all times. They can dry out for a moment, but they'll kind of limp down. Get kind of flaccid, give them a drink and boom pop right back up. But since this is a new plant, one I've brought home from the clearance section, typically the first thing I'll do with a new plant when it's new to the collection, assuming that it's already potted up and it's not something that's just bare-rooted or wrapped in sphagnum, so it's like okay to mess with it a little bit. With plants like those, or I should say a plant like this, first thing I want to do is take it to a sink, take it to a shower, or have it outside with a hose and just blast it with water. I don't want the pressure to be so much that's going to hurt the foliage, but to really clean off the tops, the bottoms of the foliage. It's a precautionary thing to do. Maybe there are some pests on the plants that you couldn't see when you're at the store picking out the plant and just get them out of there, get them down the sink. It's easy enough to do, so why wouldn't you do it, right? Just, just to be safe or a little bit of extra biosecurity when it comes to spreading things around with the plants. May as well give them a quick little rinse. And toss down a towel so that the pot doesn't drip everywhere and can go in and start getting this thing cleaned up. There's a lot of brown stuff in there. Not too bad. I've seen way worse with spathophyllums. Come in and anything that's brown, a lot of the times on spathophyllums, these will just pull right out. Just give them a little tug. They will snap off the base of the plant. If they don't snap out, not a big deal. Cut it out nice and close. What I should say is go in with a nice, clean, sterilized, or I should say sanitized pair of clippers and get all the dead stuff cut out of the plant. Not do anything for the plant once they've completely yellowed out and gone crispy. Once the green is gone, there's no reason to hold on to the foliage. So all this stuff in here, that can all go. It is universal with pretty much all plants. There are some plants that will pull their energy back down into their root or their bulb, whatever they're growing from, perhaps a rhizome. That's not something that you need to factor in with the peace lilies. I can get as many of them out as I can because the critters like to hang out sometimes in all the little folds and the debris that ends up hanging down inside the plants with all the dead foliage. And the old bloom stalks, no reason to keep those. Those can go. There are some plants like some Phalaenopsis orchids where you can hold on to those as long as it's green. You can leave it there. They might put out some more flowers, but that's not how spathophyllums do things. There we go. It's looking much better. Still poorly lit, but it's fine. You get the point. Oh, forgot to mention, if you have lower foliage that has this yellowish color to it, this yellowish sheen, and it's just on the lower foliage, that's a good indicator that the plant needs some nitrogen. In general, with new plants, I like to give them a mild fertilizing pretty much right away, or along with their first watering, I should say. Just a quarter dose of whatever's recommended on the package of an all-purpose fertilizer is usually just fine. There are some exceptions. Some plants like to hang out and rest during the winter months or the shorter days of the year. With the spathophyllum, things are fairly warm and <laughs> actually fairly bright when the sun's out. It is like pitch black outside right now. But typically this will be getting nice bright 
indirect light. Also, because need to know our plants, spathophyllums, they like things nice and moist. So I'm going to move this into a self-watering container. The container has a reservoir in the bottom where that will wick back up into the, but okay, hold on. There's some background I need to give before I do that. Oh, and spathophyllums, mildly toxic to the kitties. Want to make sure to get all that stuff cleaned up and put away where they can't get to it. All right, so here's the background of how these plants came to be, how this one came to be, I should say. Didn't care about the spathophyllum, figured I'd get it though, because I'm supposed to do a care video on it at some point. Just haven't gotten around to it. Keep them nice and moist. Don't let them sit in like a puddle of water. Bright indirect light. They can be probably four feet away from a window. Should be fine. Shades and blinds and trees that affect how much light come through or things to factor in. They do need bright indirect light to keep them flowering. Fertilize with an all-purpose fertilizer once a month to every six weeks. Clean up the dead stuff. Keep them away from dogs and cats. Good to go. They're pretty easy plants. The troubleshooting is where that video, when I do it, comes in and the video will get much longer, longer than anybody's going to want it to be, but there are lots of questions about them. That's not what this is. Know your plants, right? You pick something up from the store, hopefully it has a label on it, you can do some research and get the info on it. Spathophyllums, keep saying it, they like things consistently moist. Though they can dry out momentarily, they tend to look their best if that doesn't happen, at least not for very long. I liked this pot. Only reason I bought this, it's a nice navy blue with a gold rim. Looks cool, looks more royal blue with the lighting or lack of lighting, I should say, that's going on in here. The plant that I actually wanted is right here. Isn't that lovely? Beautiful plant. This is the Hurricane Bird's Nest Fern, which is one of the Asplenium Antiquas, and the, it's Hurricane, because it has this really cool swirly pattern to it. I was happy to see this at the store. I've wanted one for a while, but didn't want to spend the outrageous online prices that I've been seeing for it. But uh, Costa Farms, they're selling them. They have tons and tons of them. They should be available most big box stores, anybody carrying Costa Farm plants. This is a Costa Farms plant now. I don't know if they developed it, but, but they are growing it, so it should be one that everybody can get their hands on. And the pot it's in looks fine, I suppose, but it's a self-watering container. This plant, the bird's nest fern, this does not need to be in a self-watering container. No, that's totally unnecessary. So what I figured I would do is I'd take the spathophyllum back here, the peace lily, and use that in the self-watering container and then take the bird's nest fern and put it in that pot. And I can have it on the desk in here, not have to worry about the cats because the bird's nest fern, safe around cats, they can nibble on it. I'd rather they don't, but I know they will. I will discourage it. The cats will be able to munch on this plant without me having to worry about them too much. To switch these over, I'm just gonna reach in here pull out this plug that has the wicking cord on it just like that super easy and then press it into the bottom of the pot that has the spathophyllum in it drop the spathophyllum in here and that is it give it a nice water so that there's some water collecting down there in the reservoir this plant is going to be much easier to care for in a self-watering container and then the bird's nest fern can hang out in this pot on my desk cats will be able to run around up here they can nibble on it if they want to, but like I said, I'd rather they don't. I'm not gonna have to worry about it. It's a nice, safe plant to have around. Looks nice too. Need to give the pot another wipe down. It's got some fingerprints on it, but otherwise, this is nice. This is good to go. Have a new house plant to keep on the desk in here. That's exciting. And then I have the peace lily here, which I don't particularly care about. Don't get me wrong, nice plants. It's just, that's not a plant that I get excited about these days. It's good to have around because I need to do that troubleshooting video. So him. Here we are. Things work out. That worked out well. And for right now, just just until tomorrow, the peace lily's gonna sit back here. No, not ideal, but the cats can't get to it there and it's out of the way. And that way it's out of the way from the cats. Don't have to worry about it over there. Oh, that's I'm putting up shelving tomorrow when I'm done with some painting stuff and some hole patching and then the spit the peace lily can go up on the it doesn't matter, I don't think anybody cares. Hey pumpkin, you wanna say hi? No? You gotta go somewhere, you have an appointment? Yep. Oh, and the care for the bird's nest fern. Pretty basic plant. This is an easy one. Full draining soil that's in an airy mix. They don't want to sit in water. They'll rot. I let them dry out significantly between waterings. Keep it out of direct sunlight because the foliage will scorch. If you really want to get the growth to explode on these, high humidity, a really loose mix, and keep them watered on a regular basis, mimicking some rainforest conditions, they will grow very, very, very nicely like that, but not necessary. It's a tough plant, typical household conditions, totally fine with them. Fertilize it the same as I was talking about the spathophyllum. A quarter dose, about once a month, and it should be fine. Or maybe a half dose once a month with this one. Their roots can be a little bit more sensitive and burn with the fertilizer, so just that might be something to be careful about. Oh, and fluoride, forgot to mention that. If you have fluoride in your tap water, 
that can cause brown edges on the spathophyllum that I showed before and also can cause some crunchiness on some of the other plants. So maybe you want to use filtered water if that's the case. Yeah, that is a beautiful plant, isn't it? With the spinning and all the little wrinkles to reflect the light, absolutely beautiful. Okay, that's enough. Got the new plants. There's what I do with new plants or what I try to do with new plants. I'm not perfect. I don't always do all that, but if the plant looks distressed, I do make it a point to go ahead and really make sure that it's washed off very well and cleaned up and look for signs of what kind of fertilizing, what kind of tending to it might need. There are no odors coming from the soil. The pot wasn't super tight, so I don't have to worry about repotting and it didn't look like it was horribly deprived of any type of nutrients. So I'm fine to leave both of these in the mixes that they're already in. Comment down below, tips, tricks, suggestions. What do you do with your new plants? Do you quarantine them? I've been trying to quarantine a lot of my plants for several weeks before I'll introduce them to the rest of my plants. During the spring and summer, that usually just means I'll keep them in my driveway before letting them come into the backyard. This time of year, I do like to have a separate space set up for the noobs to hang out before I take them out to my grow space. That way I can watch them for a few weeks and wait for any pest explosions to start. It's a lot easier to handle that on a plant when it's isolated than when it's already spread to everything else. Even if that means just knowing that it's time to throw that plant away, that's fine too. You gotta do what you gotta do. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.